Welcome to Diet Debunking with Chantal. Today, we will be discussing the paleo diet. I'm your podcast host, Chantal, and I am joined today with nutrition experts, Mackenzie and Amelia, as well as our guest and paleo diet follower, Krista. Krista, why don't you tell us a bit about how you discovered the paleo diet? Sure. Thanks for having me. I discovered the paleo diet after hearing about my friend's successful weight loss when she went on the paleo diet. She told me all about it and it seemed super easy. Also, I saw it on Dr. Oz and I really trust his opinions. Um, Later that day, I researched the diet by going on the paleo diet website and the 10 main concepts of the paleo diet really intrigued me. Those being feeding your DNA, improving nutrient density, focusing on healthy foods and not tracking macronutrients, stopping cravings, reducing dips in energy, eating more natural and plant-based foods, improving key nutrient ratios, eating the right amount of fatty acids, improving my body's acid-base balance, and eliminating anti-nutrients. After reading about these concepts, I knew the paleo diet was going to help me fix my body, so I bought every one of Dr. Lauren Cordain's books to get started. He's the founder of the paleo diet. That sounds really interesting. Thanks for sharing, and thanks so much for joining us. Let's get right into it. Mackenzie, can you explain a bit of the background of of the paleo diet? Hi, Chantel. Thank you for having us on your podcast. The original concept of the diet was based on the research of Stanley Boyd Eaton and Melvin Connor, which they termed Paleolithic Nutrition in 1985. This research became popular in 2002 when Dr. Lorraine Corden trademarked the paleo diet and introduced it commercially in his first book titled The Paleo Diet. The diet claims to follow eating patterns humans are genetically adapted to. Although the diet claims to follow what our ancestors ate, a lot of those foods are unavailable to us today. This eating pattern would mimic what our primal ancestors consumed millions of years ago. Foods that are allowed on the diet include fruits, vegetables, lean meats, and seafoods, while the foods that are restricted or eliminated from this diet is what Cordain calls inflammatory foods, which include all grains, dairy, refined oils, refined sugars, and processed foods. Why are those foods eliminated? The paleo diet claims that these foods contain anti-nutrients. These are then explained to cause chronic inflammation, cancer, and autoimmune diseases over an elongated period of time if consumed regularly. Also, as I've stated before, Since this diet is supposed to mimic the eating habits of our primitive ancestors and these foods were not available to them, they're eliminating it from the diet. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Amelia, can you explain the science behind how the, the diet works? Absolutely. The main idea of the paleo diet is to eat like a caveman and shed pounds. Supporters of the diet argue that it is a healthier practice as there is no evidence that those in the Paleolithic time period face the same diseases we see today. The theory is, if we eat like our prehistoric ancestors, we will become leaner and less likely to suffer from various cancers, diabetes, heart disease, and many other health concerns seen today. Since the diet does not include consuming sugar, salt, processed foods, we see a substantial decrease in these items in someone who's closely following the diet. Thank you so much for your intel. Krista, would you mind telling us what your typical day looks like in terms of your meals? I'd be happy to. I got most of my paleo recipes from one of Lauren Cordain's paleo diet cookbooks. I start my day with a banana and a couple eggs scrambled in olive oil. My lunch is usually a salad with a lean meat and olive oil and lemon as a dressing. Dinner is usually something healthy like turkey breast, various vegetables like broccoli and carrots with a side of avocado slices and some nuts. They also let us have a glass of wine with dinner three times a week. I also get to snack throughout the day on lean meats, nuts, or fruit. It's awesome. What's better is I don't even have to worry about sweaty workouts or trips to the gym. The paleo diet explains that physical activity is not required to lose weight. Wine as part of a diet? No exercise? Experts, this diet sounds too good to be through. What are your opinions on all of this? It sounds like Krista is getting a good amount of fruits, vegetables, and lean meats in her diet. But let's compare this to Canada's food guide. The paleo diet is eliminating an entire food group recommended by dietitians across the country. We love the idea of moderation and including all food groups in a well-balanced diet. However, the paleo diet falls a bit short. 
Not including dairy and greens into your diet can have a lot of health implications. For example, dairy provides most of our calcium needed for proper bone development and health. Without this, it can lead to osteoporosis and other chronic diseases. We would also like to mention that physical activity is recommended by Canada's Food Guide because it strengthens and improves muscle function, supports bone strength, and is important for cardiovascular health. Going back to the topic of osteoporosis, physical activity is also recommended because it is an important lifestyle factor to prevent this illness. Cutting out all physical activity may not be such a great idea. Krista, were you aware of these possible nutrient deficiencies? Yes. In my research, there was discussion about these important nutrients. I supplement vitamin D and calcium to ensure that I'm getting enough for proper body function. Okay, so when, so even with these possible deficiencies and need for supplementation, what about the diet appeals to you? My friend introduced me to a study on the paleo diet. The conclusion of the study found that by following the paleo diet, the subjects had a lower waist circumference, improved glucose tolerance, improved blood pressure, better appetite management, and overall weight loss. For me, this was important because I really wanted to lose 10 pounds fast, just like my friend did. That sounds really interesting. Experts, with studies being done showing these positive results, why are you still hesitant to recommend the paleo diet? Despite many studies promoting the diet, many scientists suggest that the diet may be dangerous in the long run due to its insufficient intake of essential nutrients discussed before. Since the diet is not strict in regards to portion sizes and caloric intake, this may lead to an unbalanced ratio of foods. So where one person may be balancing their diet with many leafy greens and rainbow veggies, lean proteins, and a high nutrient-rich smoothie, others may not fully understand how to rationalize and may not be filling their plates with these variety of nutrient-dense foods. Great explanation. Krista, after listening to our experts, do you have any final thoughts on the paleo diet? And do you think you'll continue following it? Great question. I've only ever heard positive things about the paleo diet from doing my own research and reading Dr. Cordain's books. It's been really eye-opening to hear the other side of this research, and I'm interested in learning more about how to balance my diet without strict rules and to see the results. The paleo diet has been working for me. However, hearing this new information has made me question the long-term effects of following this diet. I'm definitely going to start to research a lifestyle change to obtain all my nutrients from food rather than spending all this extra money on supplements perhaps with the help of a nutrition professional. We understand the appeal to the paleo diet, but given this podcast session, we feel that it's just better for your long-term health to stick to a well-balanced diet that includes protein, carbohydrates, fat, and micronutrients from a variety of foods without the restriction of any food groups. Thank you so much for joining our podcast. Hope you enjoy us next time. Bye. Thank you.